Can you believe it? We are in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is one of those cities and names that seems almost mythological. And to be able to be in Jerusalem still seems a bit unreal to me. The name Jerusalem itself has connections to the Hebrew word shalom, just as Salem, Oregon has connections to the word shalom and Jerusalem. And so Jerusalem is the city of peace and the city of God's presence. And it is also the city that kills the prophets and murders those who are sent to it. And so Jerusalem has been a place of conflict. As I've already mentioned, the city of peace, the place of God's presence, and this deeply conflicted city that was at the center of the domination system of ancient Judah and Judea, and has also been victimized over the centuries by one oppressor after another. So here we are. It's critically important to realize that crucifixion was a public statement on the part of the authorities that this is what happens to you if you challenge the powers that be, that combination of Roman imperial rule and the, the collaboration of the local temple authorities. Crucifixion is a political form of execution, and it has a political meaning. And as we will see, the reversal of crucifixion, resurrection, also has a political meaning, even as, of course, its meaning is more than that. One of the central images in, that, in the Gospels for the way of Jesus is discipleship. Now it's true that being a disciple means being a student, but in the great central section of Mark's Gospel, followed by Matthew and Luke, to be a disciple means to follow Jesus. Let me illustrate that with a book written by the German Lutheran martyr of the 20th century, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Most of you, I think, know his story. Born in 1906, a gifted intellectual, a gifted musician, a marvelous human being. I think we all would have enjoyed him, loved him, and been challenged by him. And one of the books that he wrote in the late 1930s, when as a 32-year-old young clergy person, he had founded an underground seminary to train clergy who would stand in opposition to Hitler. Think of the kind of courage that took. One of the books he wrote during that period is called The Cost of Discipleship. We could also call it The Cost of Companionship. For a companion of Jesus is one who breaks bread with Jesus. And discipleship is also about that. And in this book, Bonhoeff says, when Christ calls a person to follow him, he calls that person to come and die. And when Bonhoeffer wrote those words, I believe in 1937 or 1939, he was thinking primarily of that internal transformation of dying to an old way of being and an old identity and being born into a new way of being and a new identity. The cost of discipleship is both that internal path of dying and also being willing to challenge the domination systems that rule this world with ruthlessness and brutality and violence and all of this in the name of your commitment to Jesus and the vision that we see in Jesus.
What does it mean to take Jesus seriously? Let me put it in two short sentences and I will briefly expand each. It means to love God and to change the world. To love God and to change the world. To unpack those very briefly. Jesus himself, of course, spoke about loving God with all of our heart and life force and strength and mind as the greatest of the commandments. And to love God means to center more deeply in God, to be love God, to be love the one who has given us life and in whom we live and move and have our being. And of course, for Christians, it means to love God as known decisively in Jesus. Jesus for us is the decisive revelation, disclosure, epiphany of the character and passion of God. Thank you.